The documents discussed in tonight's meeting are available to the public on request with the exception of any information protected by student or employee privacy rights. Board meeting information is posted on our website at ferndaleschools.org. If you don't have internet access and need information, please contact the board offices at 248-586-8652 by Thursday of the week prior to the meeting, and district staff will do their best to assist you. So with that introduction, uh, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Does anyone have any changes? Uh, or amendments to the agenda? Other amendments? Hearing none and hearing no objection to its adoption, the by unanimous consent, the agenda is approved. Our next order of business is a presentation by Coolidge Principal, Mr. Eric Bruner. Welcome, first, Mr. Bruner. How are you doing? Uh, I just want to say first, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. I, you all came out here, I'm assuming, to come see my presentation. Yeah. So, <laughs> I really appreciate that. Um, I think every school has a story to be told, and I'm here to proudly represent Coolidge's story, and quite frankly, I think it's been undertold. So even though I have about seven slides for everyone, it's a small microcosm of what we actually do there. I'm still staying, proud of staying here to show you what we've accomplished at Coolidge. So at Coolidge, what we have is a Coolidge way. The thing that we do, Mr. Tarasho and I, which is principal over at Roosevelt, Mr. Adams at JFK, we got together uh, in our purchase principal. This is Rachel, the veteran person we came on and established um, criteria to show how effective our school can be, whether it's academically or whether it's in behaviorally, across the district. We want to stay together across the district, so the Coolidge way. I'll start you off. Three things that we focus on at Coolidge is culture, academics, and enrichment. We want to be able to have well-rounded students and meet them at every part of their growth. In culture, one of the first things I want to focus on, we have a welcoming environment. When our students walk into the building every morning, whether a student or adult, you'll see that our class, our uh, staff is set up at every point of the building to welcome our students in, to say hello, to see how they're doing. You'll see several of them walk up and give handshakes, and I'll explain why that is. Each morning, we have classroom morning meetings where instead of most of you come to work in the morning, you grab a cup of coffee, no one gets here, just, just gets going. You know, but we teach our kids to come in and start with math and immediately start going. I don't think that's not how society actually works. So with our students, we start off with a cup of coffee. Our cup of, cup of coffee is a morning meeting. We have four things that we do in a morning meeting. We start off with a greeting, and we show our students proper greeting. Kids come into school, and we just expect them to know the right and wrong ways. In actuality, we don't know. It's up to us to teach them those ways. So we start with a greeting. We go ahead and do a uh, share, so we give students the opportunity to share each and every day to give them their own identity. We also do a morning message, and whatever message that teacher has for the day for the students, whether it's an academics, it may have been a problem in class the day before, and they want to address it as a school to help students establish uh, uh, team building and conflict uh, uh, resolution uh, techniques and strategies. And then we end it with an activity. One of the things I want to show you is a link that we do twice a week in our morning meetings. We talk about the Coolidge way, and we talk about how to show our students the, the, the best way to act establish a strong culture. This is one of the things that we do twice a week. Yeah, we should do that. That's 
video, but the actuality is just a living and breathing thing that we stand by and that we that we live by at Coolidge. We stand by that we live by at Coolidge. So, like for example, the teacher notice that a student is not going to school, but they're quick to correct. But also, we have our students buy into it. That's why we have them watch the videos and not fun videos to laugh at, but real life experiences. So, feel free to stop by because you'll catch on any given day. Uh, on fr the last Friday of every month, if you had a chance to be there, I conduct an all school morning meeting where I run an all school morning meeting with my entire school and my entire staff. And we go through the same components. I greet my entire staff. Uh, we do a sharing activity. We talk about the character traits that we worked on in that particular month and how it was effective. So I have a talk show that's called the Mr. Brunner Forum, and I bring students up and staff members up to discuss what were some of the traits that they saw that month that they weren't able to, to um, provide and show other students how what the real foolish way is. So if we're talking about uh, uh, this one, the uh, respectfulness. So how do they see that? How do they do that? What experience they come up to where they can show? The proper way to show respect. Uh, I got some pictures for you to show a little bit later. We have a Star Student Store. Star Student Store is based off of your effort. We have students that can have a uh, C and a D in their report card, but who's to say they didn't give their very best effort? And so we like to reward students that live by a strong ethic and a strong uh, code in school that means we have great behavior, that we dare to learn, we show that by how we act and how hard we try in the classroom. But those students, we create a store, all from fundraisers. Students cannot buy it with money. And we pass out tickets throughout the month, and twice a week we have the store open so they can come in and choose whatever they want because they should be rewarded for trying to do their very best in school. Again, all A's, all B's is not part of that criteria. We also have a star staff where every month I meet with my staff, and at the staff meeting I pass out stars, and I make a personal note of what they did, and I sign it myself to show that they're appreciated, and their action of school year is appreciated uh, and noticed every day. We start a safety patrol, so we make sure that kids are safe inside school and outside of school. So we make sure our dismissal and interest practices are safe for students across the street. Make sure they get in their cars carefully, things of that nature. And we also have a sixth grade student council. Uh, the ninth sixth grade is our leaders in school, so we make sure that they're provided the opportunity to lead the school in a positive way. So when they be, we be able to trust, if, if I'm living by the code of respect, responsibility, trustworthiness, and caring, we stand by those standards. I want to be able to give our students that opportunity to lead in that way. And they're doing an excellent job. They come with some great ideas, whether it's fundraising, whether it's uh, uh, movie nights, or coming up with different things throughout the school year to enrich, enrich our school culture. <coughs> so you can take a look at a few of the pictures from the all school morning meeting. This is where myself and Mr. Coleman dressed up as Santa Claus and the Grinch. So we're talking about caring. And if you go to the story of the Grinch, you read this really small heart, but when you Gave him positive courage and positive reinforcement, he became better. So, Mr. Uh, Coleman was very upset at the morning meeting, and the kids were very encouraging. I ran up to him, and you can see how it changed his spirit. So, all in fun. Here is Mr. Sigler, our fourth grade open teacher. And if you can take a look, Mr. Sigler has a nice full head of hair, but not anymore. Um, he donated and raised over $250 to raise towards all school camp, and by sacrificing to get a haircut. And he allowed kids during the all-school morning meeting to cut as they may. So for that day, he kept it that day. Uh, but I got to tell you, if you want to come over and see him, we have one. We have one for you. Uh, but again, just a sacrifice that, that the staff makes that kids do what's best for kids. In academics, every student has a data binder. What I mean by data binders, they start off with an individualized learning plan. I'm going to show you a picture of what that looks like. We run a guided reading, I'm sorry, we run a reading workshop and a math workshop, which means individualized instruction is given to students based on their needs. When we were all in school, we read the same textbook, the same story, and we expect the same results. When actuality, we're all different, we all learn in different ways, we have to respect our students as such. So we have an individualized learning plan, where uh, we right now have a guided reading pilot that we've established. In order to run that pilot, uh, we've invested over $20,000 in the last two years alone in guided reading books to enrich our reading program and chapter books. And we also purchased a level literacy intervention program. That's what Ms. Harvey is our ELA specialist. She runs that program as well. So heavy investment. Uh, and that sometimes it's a sacrifice from a principal because I had a full-time counselor at one point, but I thought that it was more important to give that money back to our students. So it could have been a help for me, but the, the main goal is 
what's best for our students. I also created a program, Extended Day Learning. I noticed in the first two years of being a principal that uh, <coughs> the summer school is just not enough. Half days, you know, three hours a week, I mean three hours a day for 40 days a week, we didn't get any substance out of it. So again, another sacrifice, I created a five-cycle Extended Day Learning program where four weeks, four consecutive weeks, hour and a half after school, we have our teachers teach for an extended day on students that are, we have two, two tier one and tier two. Tier one students are students that are just below grade level based off the Indiana NWDA scores, and tier two students are a little bit more than just a year, of, uh, a year below grade level, and really that extra intervention. Small classroom size to provide intervention on uh, extended school day. So I want to get tutoring. Tutoring is like, I'm going to help with your homework type of thing. This is an extension of the school day to build up their skills and, and to solidify their foundation. Uh, NWEA study, I, one thing I'm proud to say is that coming into uh, school, to come to Ferndale School, that I had a lot of experience on NWEA study. I saw a great for Ms. Rochelle for person, person that program for us. And also, one thing I looked at is I was able to hire teachers over the last several years. I was fortunate enough to hire several teachers over the last couple of years. I made a profound look to make sure our teachers had that type of skill set. They can read data, they can understand data, and that data can translate to enhancing instruction. So, uh, in all of Burnell schools, I want to make, make this clear, the student, the teachers at Coolidge are the most experienced teachers in regards to NWEA, Study Island, and how to transfer that information, that data, to enhance instruction. We also have an honors award program recognition, other than just our regular honors award that we do. We also buy magnets for our students that achieve honor roll status or high academic status. So if you go through our schools and you look on the lockers, you all see our students that are high achievers. So we want them to stand up and be proud of what they accomplished. So you go back to the star store and I want you to you know, say, what about the students that try hard? That's why we have a store. We just want to be able to meet students need all the way around. Because you high honors does not mean you give your very best and that should be rewarding when you try your very best. Even at the top to bottom row, and I know data can fluctuate from year to year, need a larger sample size. When I arrived at Coolidge, we were in the bottom 12 months, we were close to being a 10 percentile where the state starts to look at you and you can become a focus school. We've risen up to the 23 percentile. That's not where we, we want to be, that's not where we're going to be, and it's not, we're going to surpass that with time. But what being said, it's important to understand that we are showing growth. And it's important that our students know that they're trying their very best, it's important for our teachers to know that they're trying their very best and that we're seeing games. These are the individual learning plans we take a look that I created. You'll see the student's name, obviously the student's name is omitted in this particular room. We don't provide uh, any of that type of information. The students have their reading, writing, math data, and social and behavior goals that they create themselves based off the NWEA, based at the DRA and their own personal goals. Then we create uh, reading goals. What specifically are you trying to attain? So then that's created. And then we have an action plan. How are we going to get to that point? So each student has an individualized action plan on, okay, you need more specific uh, help in multi-digital multiplication. How are we going to do that? So we create that plan. And every month, every single month, at least one time a month, teachers sit down with their students in the conference to reflect upon where they are in order to accomplish their goals throughout the school year. And they have evidence. Please feel free to stop by Google anytime time pull data finder, anytime you like. And you'll see their goals and the evidence they are uh, using to try to attain those goals at the end of the year. Enrichment, one of the things I'm very proud of, uh, when I first arrived at Coolidge Camp was separated between our traditional and open. Now this year, even the prices were different. This year, everyone is going to camp. We're all going together, and we're going at a small low cost of $50 due to uh, money that we raised through fundraising and building rental. So that's one thing I I'm extremely proud of. Uh, we have an adventures club. We have a fifth and sixth grade uh, co-ed basketball mentoring program. Every enrichment program is a mentoring program that goes back to us trying to establish strong character traits in our students. We have the Green Beans Club. We're a green school, as a matter of fact. We have the Girls uh, Cheer and Dance Partnership with CASA. We have the Coolest News, led by Ms. Tavalier. We have the Coolest Talent Show. And I want to thank everybody that participated in our third annual talent show. When I arrived at Cruz, the talent show was done at the last day, end of the year, uh, in the cafeteria. Now it's really it's taking a life of itself, and we have to house it at FHS. Thank you, Mrs. Kirby, so much. 
but she started that. Very supportive, and I appreciate that. And we also have the end of the year student versus staff basketball game. Uh, game. Every year, six grades, they're going to beat us. I haven't found one yet. It hasn't happened yet. I don't expect it to happen. <laughs> now, if you want to know me one time about like not looking out for the students' best, competitively, is trying to look out for their best. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, who is kids at Camp Hope and Academy? Again, we have uh, our fifth grade is going March 7th and 8th. Our sixth grade, I'm oh, sorry, our fifth grade, sixth graders are going May 7th and 8th. Our fifth graders are going May 20th and 21st. And in between our fourth graders are going to camp, not camp, camp open the time, but they're going to the adventure program. Our co adventure and basketball programs, um, we did get asked me to write up in the Oakland uh, newspaper about this mentoring program, and it's been continued to be very successful. One problem I found last year that it was coinciding with uh, extended day learning, so what I did was create the program so it runs on Mondays and Fridays so that students will be able to bitch out on, miss out on enrichment programs. In our end of year student versus staff basketball game. And again, our updated talent show, if you take a look over this corner, I don't know if you got a picture of us going, that's our superintendent right there. She did a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's debatable. <laughs> and again, you know, the one thing I was that would impress me about the talent show this past weekend, the majority were fourth and fifth graders. They were so brave to stand up there, so confident. I believe that goes back to the character that we have in our students. And it showed me. If you were there, and I was there, and if you were there, I was very impressed and proud of my, my students. And that's the end of my presentation. So, Mr. Bruner, if a... Uh Community member who wasn't able to make it to the talent show wanted to contribute to the camp fund. Would they just make their checks payable to Ferndale Elementary PTA? Yes, absolutely. And, all right. I really appreciate it. So, if anybody, you want to read that again, Mr. O'Donnell? <laughs> <laughs> make your checks payable to Ferndale Elementary PTA. I really appreciate it. So, our camp is starting next month. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Bruner. Uh, next, we'll hear from our high school representatives, and we have one with us today, uh, Ms. Thomas from University High School. Welcome. Good evening. Thank Good evening. you. Mr. Bruner, your presentation made me miss middle school so much. <laughs> <laughs> I miss it so much. Those kids are really lucky. But um, I like to start off with something that's new to UHS. This year we have actually started a track team, a track and field team. And this past Saturday we had our first track meet. And it was really fun. I think everybody really enjoyed it. The coaches really enjoyed it. And we actually had some people place and medal in field events. I think it was shot put and the um, discus, I think a couple of girls placed in that, those events, so that's really good. And UHS had their first annual research fair, and that was really successful, and a lot of people really came out for that. A lot of students, they really enjoyed it because they said that they liked how teachers required them to dress professional and dress as if they were giving an actual presentation in front of their business colleagues as if they would in the real world and a lot of students enjoyed that and recently the UHS um, student and staff we have found out that one of our teachers Mr. Wilson he's suffering some health complications I, I don't know any specifics but we all really love Mr. Wilson and his quietness and his weirdness so <laughs> the DECA chapter decided to um, raise money for him doing an event called Miracle Minute and it's basically where Miss Watkins she had students from the DECA chapter go around to the classrooms and they they collected money but they only had a minute to collect all the money that they could for Mr. Wilson and overall we raised three hundred dollars in just one minute so that was really nice <laughs> pretty sure he'll enjoy it. He'll hate us for it, but he's going to enjoy it. And 
the Got Science Club this week, they're making slime. And I think the last time they met, they made candles. And before that, they made bread. So that's one of the more popular clubs at University High School. Student Council, we're preparing for our annual Grammy celebration this year. I think this year it's on May 8th or May 5th. I'm not sure which one, but that's going to be fun. It's going to be held at Ferndale High School Auditorium, and it's going to be fun to see all my peers and their talents. And Wayne State, this is my favorite. Wayne State recently held Zumba classes for the seniors, and it was so awesome. Like, I never heard of Zumba in my life before until that day at Wayne State. And it was really fun how they incorporated dance and exercise and nutrition, nutrition and health. And we also got a tour of their athletic facilities, so we got to see their baseball diamond, their gyms, their um, weight rooms. It was just really cool to see the other side or the athletic side of, you know, the very much educated Wayne State. And the juniors, they recently received their ACT scores back, and I think the teachers are now reviewing with them and going over which subjects they need to work on and which subjects they need to keep doing good at. So once they retake the ACT, they'll be able to improve their scores. And the DECA chapter also had three senior students qualify for the international competition in Orlando, Florida. And that I heard that's going to be really nice. Like, it's expensive, but it's nice. So Excellent. Yeah. And that's all that's happening at UHS. Well, there's one other piece. You guys just won a um, MASB Educational Ex Excellence Award for oh, yeah. your entire school. So. Ms. Jeffrey wanted you to say that, not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so congrats to UHS. <laughs> how people wanting to help the team go to Florida could contribute? Well, that's something that you would have to contact Ms. Watkins about, but I'm pretty sure they're open to donations because they really wanted to go. <laughs> but the, the seniors, they're just really conflicted this year because they have so much to pay for with prom and getting ready for graduation and getting ready for college in the fall. They're actually kind of discouraged, but I think deep down inside, if they really had the money, they would really go. Good question. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. All right. Well, thank you very much for your report today. Thank, thank you. you. Next, we'll move to public comment. This is the time for public participation in our meeting. The board intends for the public to have many opportunities to address the board and administration of their school district. These include email, phone calls, face-to-face -face meetings, community gatherings, public hearings, and other public meetings. We welcome individual and group input into the important issues that confront our schools. As noted at the top of the agenda, this is a meeting of the school board open to the public. We want to provide fair and impartial guidelines for participation as required by the Open Meetings Act and to encourage transparency and equal treatment for everyone in attendance. We also recognize that effective meeting an effective meeting facilitates better decisions and promotes openness by allowing more people to stay for the full length of the meeting. To meet these goals, we want to note the following items. We ask that you identify yourself and list contact information on a comment sheet to help administrators follow up with you on your comment. If you don't wish to do so in writing, please identify yourself at the podium. And if you need a response, please provide contact information with an administrator uh, prior to leaving the meeting. I will call on the people who have completed comment sheets first. Each person will have one opportunity to address the board for up to three minutes. Comments or questions should be directed to the board president. The secretary will raise his hand when uh, your time is within a few seconds of expiring. That's Kevin right there who will wave his hand wildly. Um, and I'll also give you a verbal prompt. Uh, this period of public comments is for both non-agenda items and, ag and items on the agenda. Uh, public comments will end at the close of this item on the agenda. In the event that the number of people wishing to comment requires longer than 30 minutes, public comment will be temporarily postponed after that 30 minutes and time will be added to the end of the meeting for those who did not get a chance to speak. Complaints about staff should be made outside of board meetings and should follow the applicable board policy. Please contact the superintendent's office if you have any questions about this item. 
We can't respond to complaints about employees in public, and this is meant to pr promote fairness both to the complainant and to the employee. And finally, the Ferndale Public Schools community acts with great civility toward one another, so please help us to maintain this tradition during public comment. So with that, I don't have any uh, requests for comment uh, for this meeting, so if anyone wishes to address the board, please just uh, form a line at the podium. And, uh, whoever wishes to speak first can stand up. And anyone else? If, if I, know, I know you want to speak if you line up behind uh, Ms. Johnson, so... All right. I know I spoke earlier, but some of you weren't here and nobody else was here. So I'm going, I'm not going to say everything again, but I'm going to put some key points. Um, as a union, we were asked to come up with some solutions to avoid the privatization. The union board worked diligently for hours upon hours upon hours to do that. We felt we came up with what was asked of us. We were given guidelines, we met them several different times. Every time we were basically told they weren't acceptable. Um, one of those reasons was we had discussed a pay cut for custodial staff. And the word I believe was used that if we cut them, the morale would be too low for that low of a wage. This is on the website, it's public knowledge. What, one of the companies you're looking at, GCA pays. Based on 32 employees at one job, the custodians make $8.50 an hour. It's a lot lower than what we suggested. Their top pay here is $12 an hour. That's the top pay we can find for anything. For you to say that our morale would be cut when you're allowing them to keep their job, they're voting on it so they're willing to take it, yet you want to put people in there that know nothing about your school, nothing about your children, nothing about the way it's ever done to make a lot less money and think their morale is going to be better. Talking about people that have given, you have some that literally are short, will be short one month to being able to retire with their benefit. One month. Um, again, the first time this administration is being told to try to fix the budget, that's the first thing they went to. There are so many other avenues that you could explore. It's strictly a choice whether you choose to or not. Um, all I can really say that I didn't say earlier is I hope every one of you think really, really carefully, individually, it doesn't matter what you said in the closed meeting. It doesn't matter what you said 10 minutes ago. Think really carefully about what you personally, the issues you personally have with privatizing. And if you have any doubts, vote no. Because once you vote yes, it's done. And you're going to lose something that is so important to Ferndale schools. None of you have little kids anymore. I don't think any of you have kindergartners or first graders anymore. Karen and I don't do. Little kindergartners? I have a preschooler and she has okay. a first grader. So remember them coming into that building and the difference between them meeting someone like Mr. Dan or Mr. Dan, any of those, or meeting people that they never saw before and they may never see again. And think about if your child has an issue, if you want them to go to that person that you don't know who they are because you had no part of hiring them, you have no part of their background, you have no part of the control over who's in your building. It's really, really, really vitally important that you not, I, I'm, I'm really asking you to make sure you vote with what's in your heart and not what you think is going to be expected of you. Thank you. President FAES. I can't add a lot and I'm very emotional about this topic because a lot of these people, at least I think, are my friends and my colleagues and I work very closely with them. And it's very sad to me that we're at this place, that we're even considering this because these people are the livelihood of Ferndale Schools. 
And I think that you're going to have a lot to lose if this is the way that you decide to vote. Anyone else? Good evening. Uh, my name is Nikki Amy. I hadn't intended on speaking, but I see a lot of familiar faces in this crowd here and just want to give my support for all of these men and women that uh, do such a great job with my children. I appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Seeing no one else uh, coming up to the podium, we will close public comment and move on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda are items um, that are uh, routine items um, where the board has reviewed uh, information ahead of time and uh, expects um, or doesn't require any additional information or discussion. Uh, any board member can remove an item from the consent agenda, um, and it will be removed on one board member's uh, request and placed down in item 8 on the agenda. So the items for tonight's consent agenda are uh, 5.1, a request to approve minutes of the regular meeting of March 16th, 2015. Item 5.2, request to approve minutes of the special meeting on March 28th. 5.3 is a request to approve bills and accounts. 5.4 is a request to approve resignations and new hires. And item 5.5 is a request for second reading and approval of policies 6326 and 6410. Does anyone wish to remove anything from the consent agenda? Seeing no request, um, I will entertain a motion to approve uh, consent agenda items 5.1 through 5.5. Moved by Ms. Toomey and seconded by Ms. Kerr Mueller. And a roll call, please. Stephen Krause? Yes. Kerr Mueller? Yes. Tosh? Yes. 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 Yes.
and those are the things up for consideration for the board this evening. First question that uh, those of you in the audience or board members may be considering is, why do we need to consider this? Well, there's several salient points that I'd like to bring to your attention. Uh, the state allows districts to privatize non-instructional services, uh, custodial maintenance being one of those. Um, that is the most, probably the most commonly looked at, with the exception of maybe nutrition, um, among all school districts. Um, districts who have done this have legitimately realized savings in the neighborhood of 20 to 40 percent. Um, and most that we were able to speak with, if not all, um, shared that they were able to do so without sacrificing the appearances of their buildings. Um, unfortunately, this is, not a, uh, this is not an action that we take lightly. Um, however, contractual salary decreases, uh, declining enrollment, and capital needs are just stretching our budget too thin. Uh, unfortunately, to the point where if the board does not take the step this evening, um, there's, there will be need, need to be consideration of some much deeper and far-reaching cuts in the area of instruction or programming if we're not able to do this. Um, other important factors to consider, uh, a company that does cleaning professionally uh, has many resources at their disposal in terms of training, and we, and we think training is an important thing to consider um, that a corporation can offer that we as a smaller entity cannot do as effectively. Um, there is uh, on-site management that's provided through the vendor that will be providing our services. And finally, the vendor that we're bringing forward to the board this evening is actually a vendor who provides services uh, to several of our neighboring districts. So there's a very real possibility that we'll be able to coordinate with some of our neighboring districts to, uh, um, uh, to provide some economy of scale. Some general information on outsourcing that I think is important to be clear on. Um, first of all, uh, if the district chooses to outsource on one or both of these services, we will enter into a three-year contract with the identified vendor. Um, that is the potential outcome for this evening should the board choose. Um, one of the things that you'll often hear about outsourcing as people talk about it is that you kind of get locked in with a vendor that you're unhappy with. Um, the terms that we put forth in the RFP and the terms that all the vendors that we talked to replied with um, provide for many different reasons for early termination, up to including what they call termination for convenience, uh, which provides a six-month uh, notice requirement, up to a uh, safety issue, which could be uh, an almost instantaneous dismissal of contracts. So these are not ironclad um, contracts and it is, it is definitely come, uh, it is definitely important for the vendor as well as for the district to work together in good faith and establish a good relationship. Um, all the vendors that we worked with and especially the one that we're bringing forward to the board tonight indicated that they always prefer to hire existing and incumbent employees um, with of course feedback from the human resources office and unfortunately existing employees who do not choose to accept a position with the vendor uh, would be laid off at the end of the school year. I think it's important at this point to address some common misconceptions about outsourcing and I'll try to go through as many of them as I can as expediently as I can. They are listed on the board. Um, you've probably heard some if not all of them. Um, one of the things that you hear is, oh they don't do fingerprints, we'll have criminals in our buildings. It's not true. Um, the same criteria that apply to, uh, to our district employees in terms of the fingerprinting, in terms of the background checks, also apply to any employees of a third party vendor. Um, we house their fingerprints in our human resources office and we get notification if there is a hit or any, um, anything happens like that. You hear people say, oh, we'll have strangers in our buildings. Um, and certainly we feel for our um, employees who, are, who have been loyal to us for many years and who are like family to us, but it, the, what we have learned as we talk to, for example, in Royal Oak where we went to visit, um, the administrator that I spoke to in Royal Oak told me after we've been doing this for five years, it just feels like they're part of our family. They're just part of who we are. Um, so certainly there is an initial period of, of transition and adjustment, um, but what we have seen and what we have heard is that that goes away over time. Uh, you hear the, the stuff in the teacher's classrooms isn't safe. Uh, the security of the building is compromised. It's just simply not true. The data doesn't support that at all. Um, absences and turnover will be higher. Um, actually, again, the data does not support that. Um, the, uh, um, 
uh, we had, I believe, an absence rate, and I don't even want to quote you a number because I don't have it in front of me. I don't want to quote an accurate number, but um, based on what I saw from our employee attendance both last year and this year, um, I believe that both our attendance and our turnover rate will be similar with an outsourced vendor once we make the transition. Um, you do hear no, um, there's no benefits and the wages are significantly lower when you outsource. Well, actually the benefits are there and they're pretty comparable benefits and pretty, pretty, pretty uh, um, competitive bit of it, uh, benefits. Um, you hear the wages are lower. Yeah, they're lower. Um, they're not as lower as somebody in poor public comment led you to believe, but they are lower. Um, and um, I'd be happy to provide those statistics as well because you are not given correct statistics. Um, the, uh, the other thing you hear is there's a surcharge for everything the district does, including you know, community building use, uh, um, things like that. Really, the only thing that the district would get surcharged for in terms of building use is if there was a community rental. If the, if the community rented the building um, for a reason on the weekend, we, there would be a charge to the district. We, of course, would simply pass that expense on to the entity that was renting it from us. Um, you know, bus drivers are next. The, the, uh, uh, the secretaries are next. You hear that a lot. It's, it's simply not true. Um, uh, we have looked at every employee group that we have, and this is really the custodial maintenance are the only ones that make financial sense for the district to consider. Um, and, and again, finally, we're not going to get the savings that we're looking for. Um, we do believe, based on what we hear from our colleagues across the county, that, that we will. Financial considerations, of course, are first and foremost. Uh, if you look at the percentage of our overall budget that goes towards custodial maintenance services, uh, this goes back to the most recent year we have data for, which is 2013-2014. In that year, 11.78% of our overall budget was spent on custodial maintenance services. Um, in terms of uh, benchmarking, that is the third highest rate in the county in terms of the overall percentage going towards those services. If you look in the last column in front of you, the, um, the districts, our, our neighboring districts, what we call our benchmarking districts, um, we're, uh, we're all significantly lower than that in the neighborhood of seven and a half to nine and a quarter percent. Um, and uh, of that list you see in front of you, uh, Clawson and Berkeley, I believe, have not outsourced Royal Oak and Oak Park have. Um, just so that information is out there. What's important to note about this screen is while we're third highest in the county in custodial maintenance spending, um, we remain second to the bottom in spending on instruction. And that's a priority that we feel very um, uh, strongly about promoting in terms of reprioritizing that spending. Uh, current staffing level, 26 employees, of course, that does not include our, uh, our uh, transportation employees, including our tr transportation-related employees. Um, current salary ranges are cleaning specialists, uh, making the area of 1050 to 1150 an hour. Um, our other custodians, much higher than that, are maintenance as well. Um, what we found is that although our starting wages are at the bottom of the county average, our top step custodians and maintenance are towards the top. In fact, of the eight districts remaining in Oakland County who have not outsourced, um, we, um, in terms of our step one employees, our clean specialists, we're the second lowest in the county. Um, our top step, our, uh, um, our upper level custodians, uh, second highest in the county. Um, so it tells us that something's a little out of whack there. Um, so my summary as we talk about financial considerations is up on the screen. And essentially, it restates the fact that uh, given all the main budget pressures and expenses that we have coming in many years, we need to find something that will give in our budget. Um, our benchmarking shows that our expenditures are clearly out of whack with the districts around us. Um, and we feel that outsourcing presents an opportunity to save a significant amount of money while also positively impacting the cleanliness and safety in our buildings. Uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to walk through the bid process with the board. Uh, in the end, eight, eight vendors attended the pre-bid meeting, which is one of the requirements of the bid process, um, gave intents to bids. Seven ultimately submitted bids. Um, of those seven, five vendors provided bids for both custodial and maintenance services. That was Grand Rapids Business Services, or GRBS, uh, ABM, Master Maintenance, GCA, and DM Broke. Um, one vendor just bid on maintenance services. That was KNS Enterprises. You may recognize KNS. They've done a lot of um, work in the district over the last several years. 
uh, and one vendor bid just on custodial services, and that was EnviroClean. Um, and all these vendors, this was a significant investment of effort and time on these vendors. They spent um, the better part of two days walking through buildings across the district with me, um, and, so, and they all really did submit quality bids. Um, in terms of the bid process, what went out to them included a request for some pretty specific information. So I'd like to just go over with the board that list of information that those vendors had to include. Um, each vendor needed to give us all-inclusive pricing for the three school years from 2015 to 2018. Uh, they had to provide us with the hourly wage and benefits that they provide to employees. Um, they needed to provide references from other Michigan K-12 districts. Um, if there was anything in the RFP that they could not agree to or requested an exception to, that would be indicated in there. They had to show their corporate stability. Um, and they had to indicate in what situations additional charges could be assessed to the district, uh, charges that weren't covered in the RFP. Uh, the specifications in the bid included with advance notice that they're expected to cover the after hours and the weekend events that happen in our buildings through adjusting staffing. So say, for example, there's a volleyball tournament at the high school on Saturday. Uh, the expectation will be that the vendor will adjust their staffing to have somebody there at no additional expense to the district, whereas um, depending on the situation, something like that could incur overtime costs currently, um, depending on how we staff it. Um, again, no additional charges for substitute coverages. Um, there are penalties included if, for example, an employee is not wearing a uniform on site um, or, or if there are, there's a whole list of... Uh, um, situations where the district can assign a penalty to the vendor as well as some pretty specific terms for dismissal of the contract which we talked about so there is we're not signing our names in blood here there's a great deal of flexibility and also a great deal of power on behalf of the district in terms of who we have in our buildings and the jobs that they do we assembled a committee that looked at the bids and uh, in general the criteria that we used to evaluate them were uh, number one the wages they provided to their employees uh, number two, and uh, equally important references from other current K-12 districts, uh, we had some vendors who applied, uh, who submitted bids, who really did not have any contracts currently in any districts that we could say looked like us or, 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 or were comparable to us. Uh, we looked at the pricing, obviously, and the potential cost savings for each vendor. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> The low bid was not necessarily the bid that we're going to bring in front of the board tonight, um, and I think that's important to note. Uh, the financial stability of the vendor was important to us, as well as, in general, the overall fit for our Ferndale community. Uh, following that initial review, we had four vendors come in um, on Monday, March 30th. That was GCA, Grand Rapids Business Service, EnviroClean, and K&S. Um, following those interviews, the committee suggested doing site visits for two vendors. Um, at that point, that was GCA and Grand Rapids Business Services. Um, primary factors that we used in, in uh, not moving people forward at this point were, again, poor wage or benefit structures, um, poor fit with our community, lack of comparable district service or other pricing concerns. Um, the print's rather fine here, but I will summarize it for you. Uh, following that, we did surprise visits in two different locations. The first was at Royal Oak High School and Northwood Elementary in Royal Oak. Um, our surprise was foiled a little bit in Royal Oak, but not by much. Um, we, uh, apparently, G uh, GCA did get the word that we were on their way at some point that morning, we think. We're not quite sure, but um, it, it was pretty much a surprise nonetheless. And the facilities in both buildings in Royal Oak were, were very impressive. And I know there were a couple board members there. Um, as well as myself, um, the, even down to their boiler rooms, when you went into their boiler rooms, their boiler rooms were clean and debris free. Um, the employees we talked to seemed to be content. Um, the district manager as well as the, the, uh, the building manager at Royal Oak High School were actually former district employees who had significant promotions as a part of them moving over to GCA. Um, and I mentioned in the slide up there some of the facilities that we noticed that uh, were especially clean while we visited their buildings. Uh, we also visited East Detroit District. We visited East Detroit High School and Pleasant View Elementary in East Detroit. Um, frankly, this visit was not as impressive. 
Um, the high school was, had, had some issues, the elementary was better, um, but pretty much only because the elementary principal was on them constantly telling them what to do. Um, in general, the buildings we visited were not nearly as clean as in Royal Oak. Um, there were some issues of coverage that were discussed due to the size of the company and the pool of substitutes. Uh, Grand Rep, GRBS does not nearly have as many clients in the area as GCA does. Um, and I think in the end the committee sensed that as we visited East Detroit. Um, there was one employee that we talked to when we visited the elementary who said, said he liked working there. So um, I have provided complete pricing information to the board. Um, in the end, the vendor that we feel like is the strongest and the best fit for the district is GCA. Um, GCA is a nationally established organization that's been around for many years. Uh, they service many districts here in Metro Detroit as well as across the region and again nationally. Um, the GCA bid provides for cost savings of over 300000 just in the first year um, and nearing five hundred and fifty to $600,000 in the second and third years. Um, and those pricing, the prices you see in front of you do include some pretty um, generous contingencies. Um, for example, unemployment costs we don't think is going to be as bad as what we projected, but we wanted to project something realistic to make sure that we were being realistic in our projections. So um, there are other potential savings that we see as we, um, as we look to this. The pricing that was provided to the board did not include the elimination of buildings purposely because we wanted to be able to provide apples to apples in terms of comparing that to our current custodial services. Uh, based on our discussions with GCA, we will, we will see a savings of about $54,000 annually over the next three years uh, because of the building closures. Now, of course, it's important to say and to be fair that we would also see a, a, a number cut um, if we were to have our own in-house custodians. So I think that's important to note. Um, we would, um, the bid that is included includes some substitute custodians. Um, last year, our expense for that was $28,000, I believe. Uh, we believe that we could save as much as $50,000 for services that we're currently contracting out um, that could be covered by the, by the vendor. For example, some boiler services, some HVAC stuff, um, some simple electrical stuff. That's not to say that GCA will cover everything because they won't. Um, you know, but um, there, we do believe that there are a lot of things that our maintenance people from GCA will be able to cover that we're currently paying for contractual services. Uh, the bid you have in front of you uh, includes the, uh, an option for us to negotiate with the vendor for them to uh, do supplies for years two and year three of the contract. Um, we do intend to talk to GCA if the board does approve that tonight um, to see if they'd be willing to pick up supplies in year one. Um, uh, looking at our supplies expenses versus what we may see through GCA, we think that we could achieve a savings of about $20,000 there. Um, and there's other things that add up to about $200,000 in terms of those contingencies, depending on how things go. So, um, you know, the, the savings are not all in the pricing that was composed. There are, there, there are a lot of other factors to include. Um, I want to invite our representatives from GCA to come up. Um, if you want to, it might be easier to walk around the back wall and around the front there. I'll give them a chance to introduce themselves and answer any questions that you have. Of course, I can answer questions too. Uh, but at this time, it's the recommendation of the administration that the board accept the bid, enter into a contract with GCA for all custodial maintenance services with the exception of custodial services at the grant building for the 2015-2016 school year. Uh, to clarify that exception, we believe that um, we have employees who are close enough to retirement that we uh, would like to help out and we also believe that because Grant will house the alternative ed and adult ed programs next year uh, that the, custodian, the salary for that one remaining district employee at Grant could be covered by the adult ed budget next year and the effective date for this contract would be July 1st. So I can answer any questions the board has but before I do I want to give the uh, board a chance to meet our two representatives from GCA who are here tonight and I'll let them introduce themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for hearing us. Uh, my name is Don Clark, and I am the Vice President of Operations for GCA <coughs> Education Services. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Wolf Warner. I'm the Regional Manager for GCA Education Services. Good evening. So, do you want to share a little bit about GCA? About sure, I'd like to. Uh, I, I, I think it's... Uh, the, thank you so much for the kind words about the company. We are part of the community. Uh, we, we do serve 
education only uh, throughout the country, uh, GCA education services. We do have a commercial side, but we're all one team, one GCA, and we've got resources to pull from. We, we do, in fact, care first. Uh, Mr. Bruner's presentation was just exceptional. Students first. Um, we talked about good character, and, 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 and we're all teachers. Uh, our custodial team members have children in, in the schools. Uh, I, I'm married to a teacher, and I was a school teacher myself. I understand the importance of, of education uh, and, and putting money into classrooms to have those resources so we can continue building the programs and the strategic plan that the superintendent has, uh, having students realize their dreams and live those dreams. And so um, as a company, uh, we've been around for nearly 14 years. We are the largest K-12 provider in the country. Uh, but we're still a small enough company to be very personal. Uh, we don't fire the, the current custodians. We want them. We want our team members here. They know the buildings, as, as was mentioned, and I appreciate that. Uh, we hire from within the community. We're here to provide, um, you know, these, these are our kids that go to these schools. We want uh, the, the local community folks. We don't bring in people from Cleveland or from Chicagoland. So <clears throat> that being said, we are a good, sound, strong company that believes in integrity, true north, doing things right for the students first, and seeing if we can put a little money back in those classrooms to meet our objectives in education. Do you have any questions? Anyone? Uh, uh, can, can, we're, we're not going to take questions from the audience. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, what, yeah. I'll just told you. I'm sorry yeah. about that, Ms. Brett. <laughs> um, one question is how, how was. How, how does GP, GCA approach improving uh, cleanliness and safety in, in the buildings, and how do you maintain uh, high standards to those ends? Thank you, sir. Uh, first off, we are a professional cleaning company. This is how we feed our kids. Um, we use the best products. We have a weekly training program called Method, Method of the Week. Uh, we professionalize services. We train our folks. We spend time with them. I, I'm the vice president, but I put my, uh, my non-slip shoes on just like everybody else, and I get in there and we teach folks how to do it right. Not that they don't understand how to do it now, but we continuously grow uh, our folks into professionals, and, and, and we trust but verify. Ronald Reagan said that. We trust but verify, and we continue to move forward with that uh, on a weekly basis, make sure they have the best equipment, the, the, they have clean mops to use, good mop buckets, our, our, our made carts, et cetera. We monitor those programs with a quality assurance program called Total Facilities Management. We bring in technology. We introduce very simply on an iPad. We go through and it randomly asks us to go look at different places that we may not get into. Boiler rooms are one of those. Boiler rooms are, are part of our school too. Uh, sanitation. We want our kids to come to class. We don't need little things like MRSA and, and influenza to, 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 to creep in. So we teach them um, proper techniques, hot, hot spot cleaning, et cetera. Green cleaning, sustainability, uh, being proactive and, and cognizant to our environment. Uh, we do all these things and we do it on a, on a weekly basis, on a regular basis. We, we're there for our employees. We're there for the teachers and principals. Anytime they have a complaint, and there's gonna be complaints, folks. Um, what we do is a dirty job, but do it, do it right, do it right now. Let, let's, any problems that we have, we fix those problems. Uh, we don't anticipate any big problems. Um, you know, if we break something, we knock something off a desk, we take care of that problem, we pay for that. We, we don't make it anyone's problem, it's ours. Any questions? Can you describe your um, benefits that you offer for the employees? Yes, ma'am. Any uh, of, the, of the current employees that wish to come on board, and we hope they all do, that, that qualify. We do background checks, no different than you would for a teacher or anyone else. Uh, they will start at the highest end. I believe you have that. You may have that in front of you. Uh, the highest end of the wage rate, uh, wage range for the size and scope of their, their buildings. Um, we also, like I stated before, we like to grow our people. So many of our managers started off as custodians. 
moved up to lead custodian, and then some of which came became managers, and and have transferred out to different parts of the country in some cases. Um, I, you know, I started off cleaning buildings after I retired from the Navy, and, um, and I didn't start off as a vice president. I earned my way up in this great company. Um, I'm super proud of that fact. Uh, this guy here actually got me the job. <laughs> uh, I was working at a bicycle shop. Uh, from, a, from an insurance stance, uh, benefits, we offer uh, dental, vision, life, um, short-term, long-term, uh, disability, um, should they choose those things, and an uh, Affordable Care Act um, level of health insurance uh, to meet all of those goals and standards that are set forth, mandated by the government. Oh, and a 401k, I forgot about that. <laughs> it's an Thank important you. one. <laughs> Could you talk a little bit about what you do to retain employees within a school building community? Yes, ma'am. Um, first, we make them professionals. Uh, we treat them as professionals. Um, so many school districts I've walked into, when we, when we got there, they were just the janitor. Um, I still remember Mr. Wilson from when I went to high school. He was the guy. You know, he had the keys. He, you know, and, and, and he was well respected. Um, I, I think that's important. When, when we walk into a school building, we um, we shake their hand. We make sure that their 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 uniform is clean and that they have a good uniform. If they don't, we help them with that. We make sure that they do. We make sure that they have all the safety equipment necessary. All the things that that, that build the team. We train them. We teach them. We work with them. Um, we have a cell phone that's open 24 hours a day. If they have a problem, if they get injured in the rare event that they get injured, we have a very very safe company here. Um, we, we care about them. We just do. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know how else to say it. Um, we have a very high retention rate throughout the country, uh, with, with very little exception. There's some places down south that you think would be the, the, the happiest places on the planet that have a lot of turnover, but as it turns out, they're seasonal. So they go clean hotels at some part, and then they come back to us and they clean schools. But um, we really do care about our folks. and, and uh, Subsequently, they just stick around, maybe to see our pretty face sometimes. I don't know, but uh, we have recognition programs for them. We, we like to get the, uh, the principals and the teachers involved with that, and um, we like to get the school board involved with that. We love that. We are our, our employees of the year, schools of the year, employees of the month, um, just little rewards like that. Safety pro, green, green champions. We do all those things to keep them involved. They, they, they're more to us than, than somebody that cleans the school. Um, what happens when a principal of a building comes upon a problem that, you know, within the building? What's the process that the principal goes through to, you know, solve that problem? Uh, it's simple. Uh, probably no different than he or she does now. Um, we don't have a big, just because we're a professional company, or outsourced, nasty word, I know how it is. Um, he or she has the absolute right to go over there and say, hey, we've, we've got a spill in the cafeteria, or I need a setup done, or the what have yous. Um, if she doesn't want to do that or he doesn't want to do that, you can call the, the account manager or the, or the regional manager. We're all open right there for, we're at your service. We're here to take away all that stuff that, that's kind of the backside of education and put it on us so you guys can teach kids. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's not a big chain of command. It's, it's nothing, nothing like that. Now, um, I'll answer the, I'll kill the elephant in the room. What happens when there's a, uh, that employee that is no longer performing well for us? We don't make you guys the bad guys. We don't make the principals the bad guys. They simply come to one of us, uh, they make one phone call or an email and um, say, listen, you know, Mr. and Ms. So-and-so is not performing well. We don't, we would prefer not to have that individual uh, in our building any longer. Take care of that problem, and we do that. Now, the first thing we do is we try to fix the person. <laughs> we don't we don't nimbly bimbly start terminating people. I, I don't like that at all. We try to fix the person. We find out where the problem lies. You have to walk a mile in somebody's shoes. Maybe they had a bad day or a bad week or a bad month. Um, but sometimes we we can't save them all. And uh, but we follow the we follow a human resources track that that would hold up anywhere. <laughs> we want our people. It, so I hope that answers your mm -hmm. question. Thank you. Uh, and a follow-up, 
Um, can you find it for me, Kevin? Um, I lost. I lost. I lost my question. No, I had another question. It's going to come to me. I'm sorry. It has to do with. Um, No, I lost it. Sorry. Can I ask you about that? Maybe it'll come to you. Thanks. <laughs> um, can you talk a little bit about how you, uh, when a substitute is needed because of illness or uh, vacation, how you uh, manage that process, what your substitute pool looks like, and, and uh, how it would work here in Burnett? Yes, sir. Um, we, we have a... a, a, a Pay system called Chronos. It's pretty easy. They just come in and punch in. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and so our, our management staff takes a look at that uh, several times a day. We want to make sure that, that our folks are either A, they, they, they're there, and if they're not there, we make a phone call and we get our substitutes in there. Um, it, it's, it's, it tra it'll be transparent to the, to the schools. Uh, that's obviously, we, we don't want to make this your problem, otherwise why do this? Uh, if you still got to manage the process, it doesn't make any sense to you. So, uh, and the other thing, if you've ever been a custodian, you know, we love to talk. So we, we uh, you know, we'll call and say, hey, look, you know, so-and-so's not here, our lead custodians, we're missing a body, or hey, you know, somebody's not here, and we get that covered directly. So, so it doesn't affect our daily cleaning. I remembered it. Oh, go ahead. Um, your company focused, Focuses on education, you know, schools. Yes, ma'am. Primarily, um, what specific types of um, special training do you have for people who clean schools? Mm -hmm. And specifically, I, um, I'm hoping you can talk about um, employees that work around children. That's exactly what I was going to talk about. Yeah. Uh, the difference between um, education and everything else, it's kind of like the difference between chemistry and physics. If it pops, fizzles, or stains, it's chemistry, everything else is physics. Well, we're kind of chemistry. So the biggest difference in our training, cleaning a building, is cleaning a building, by and large. Um, there are different standards, but there's, there's not a lot of difference there. If we go through some extensive human resources training, um, what not to do is, is easier than what to do around children. Um, we talk about we're adults, but we watch our mouth. We're all teachers. We, we, so we do, have a, we do have a training track before they even go into the schools, uh, before they ever walk out of our office when they get hired. Um, they have to take an exam. It's pretty rudimentary. Keeps things real simple, but it's, it's something that, that uh, we're around kids. You know, we can't be touching people and doing, you know, uh, watch our watch our little sailor mouths and, and so on and so forth. As I say that, I can say that legally because I was a sailor. Um, but uh, so we do go through those processes and we do that regularly. It's not something we do once and done. Um, and then each year we also have a a big grand training session where we discuss once again safety, technique, and some other things like that. But it also includes um, a violence-free workplace. Um, rights and responsibilities, all of those things that you would expect from the human resources aspect, uh, inclusive of just being a nice person. You know, don't let your, self-control is one of the most important things you can teach anybody, and so that's something that we really focus on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So you discussed the process of, um, there was an issue with the employee, but let's speak a little bit about the experience of our employees adjusting to a non-union environment. So if they have a workplace issue, you know, the practice right now is to file a grievance and you have the support of the union. So can you describe what that would look like if you were an employee having an issue? Yes, ma'am. Um, we have several layers of, of management. Um, our lead custodians inside the school are, are that ground level. And then we have a account manager, regional manager, senior regional manager, vice president. We have a human resources department. They have the opportunity um, at any time. If they, if they don't like uh, anything from uh, the person they're working with to the safety, we're not providing the right equipment to, to come to us 
uh, in our company from the CEO down. I used the term true north earlier. Uh, people first, service first. Uh, if they have an issue, they, we take care of that for them, whatever it happens to be. Sometimes it's a personal issue. But, but from a professional, we'll stick to that. Uh, if they don't like what's going on, they have a chain of command that they can go through, uh, and we try to fix that problem at the lowest level. And if it gets up to me, I assure you it'll be fixed. <laughs> uh, I, it's a very rare occasion. Um, I've got 55 accounts under my charge in several different states. My phone rarely rings, and I go see all of my accounts. I, I walk into the buildings, I shake their hands. Most of these folks know who I am. So we do have levels, and, if, and our human resources department is separate from us. So if we're, the, if we're being the bad guys, they can call our human resources vice president, and um, he has no sense of humor, of which he is aware. He will get the problem fixed. Other questions? All right. Thank you uh, very much Thank for you, sir. answering our questions. And um, so, in terms of our deliberation, uh, the board can deliberate with a. Uh, once we have a motion, so I'll entertain a motion. Uh, to, uh, based on the administration recommendation, the board approved the contract with GCA Services Group for custodial and maintenance services for the three year period beginning July 1st, 2015, and ending June 30th, 2018. Um, the grant building will be serviced by a district employee through June 30th, 2016, at which time GCA will also assume responsibility uh, for grant. So, uh, Second. Seconded by Jen. Uh, discussion on the motion. I have discussion. Okay. Okay. So, um, as a school board member, I think it's important to vote in a way that reflects what I think is good for our district. And I think that strong unions are good for our district. I, I would like to see our unions in Michigan and in Ferndale being strong again. I will be voting no to privatizing because I believe that unions are a good thing. I truly believe this. Um, and even though I really do think that our process has been correct, we have done the correct thing in going through the process, it's been very clear. I'm very proud of the way that everyone has um, operated. I am, however, upset with the, um, the regional union representatives at the top, and I don't think that they were supportive enough. And if I were a member of this union, I would want to see someone held accountable over the way that the AFSCME was supported by their state and regional organizations. That being said, and I understand why we're here at the same point, this is, this is a huge pickle we're in, in all of Michigan. And it, it makes, I know everyone at this table, extremely, extremely sad that we even have to ask any of you guys to go through what we are all going through because we are a school family. Um, I will be voting no, but I'm going to support whatever happens today. But I, I, I just felt very strongly about saying that. So, that's it. Um, I, can, um, I uh, support the recommendation. Um, I agree, Nan, with uh, what you said about, you know, the, the fact that we are in a situation where we have uh, only so much budget to work with. Um, I think that uh, I, I can't reconcile the, 
value of putting kids first um, and trying to get more money into the uh, classroom um, with, uh, with the amount of money that we're spending on non-instructional services. And I know that we have worked hard to cut out a lot of that uh, <coughs> spending. We spend significantly less on central administration um, than we do. Uh, unfortunately, we spend less on uh, instruction uh, than we did. I know we're going to, we went through a restructuring process um, that was in part designed to save money and take buildings offline, and that was, there were many difficult decisions uh, made along the way there. Um, and uh, there's you know, several other things that we're going to continue to, to uh, look at in terms of um, Mr. Pruitt and, and uh, his administration team finding money in next year's budget because this is a huge budget problem that we have. I don't think, I don't think outsourcing is anyone's first choice, but um, I think the recommendation that's in front of us is the best option that we have available. I, I believe that GCA and the contract with them um, will work out for the best of our students and that we will realize the financial savings that we have and that our buildings will be, uh, will be cleaner and safer and, uh, and more well maintained and I think and I hope that we'll be able to keep employees like GCA has done in other districts and, and, uh, and, and prevent turnover from becoming a problem and I think that the contract um, Lays the ground for that too. So, <coughs> excuse me. Those are the those are the principal reasons why why I'm supporting this. I'll go next. Um, I'm I'm supporting the recommendation. I feel that um, I feel confident that we've gone through the right the process correctly. I feel confident in our administrators that they have made this recommendation in good faith and that they have um, the, the interests of our students as a priority. Um, this has not been something that I have taken lightly and I don't believe that anyone else at this table has. I believe that we have all put lots of time and thought into this. and. Um, I, I have confidence in the integrity of the vendor that's being um, recommended. And I feel that this, you know, while we're in a very ugly position of having to make this choice, I feel that this is going to set our district on the path toward putting more of our professional resources, our superintendents, our assistant superintendents, our building administrators, toward the education of the kids in our district. Um, I feel that um, that has to be our number one priority and um, that this, this will set our district up for success. It's hard for us to ever be really sure of anything up here, but I believe that this, um, that this will, like I said, put, set our district up for success. As I reflect on the year, your your first year here, like I, I think about all the emails and all the phone calls and all the town forums where you come to us, and you consistently had to lay out financial challenge after financial challenge after financial challenge, but then how you kept coming back with such integrity, trying to find every solution you possibly could, starting with the technology, tightening the um, procedures on laptops so we weren't leaking the hundreds of thousands of dollars, the consolidation of adults in um, the DLC buildings. You um, went and immediately brought in some more bond oversight and found more money there. You went through and, um, let's see, you, you and Dee worked to remove two buses and try and find some ways to consolidate services there. 
We um, renegotiated the CASA contract. We have been seeking collaboration with Hazel Park. We've gone through some energy savings programs, even down to copier contracts being renegotiated, and also trying to find ways to bring in additional revenue. We've been improving our marketing and um, community relations, public relations, through Bill Good's office, and um, even the way that you brought in additional resources through Wayne State University. So one of the things I look at is, is there something else we can do? And you have, I think, consistently looked for every corner and every possible method of creativity to bring in new revenue, to save what money we have. And then I look at the process. And I agree with you, Amy, and I think that the process was good. And, man, I can't agree with you more. I mean, I am I just com am coming back from a conference where, you know, we were talking about just this, how do we re-empower our unions and how have they weakened and what do we do to reinforce them? I'm communicating with Lois Weiner and other people about that very issue. But the fact of the matter is, the ball was dropped, and I don't have another workable option on the table to vote on. And so I, I kept holding out hope, and it breaks my heart, but I, I don't see an option. Well, I can go next and say that this is another exceptionally difficult decision that we've been faced with um, in the string of difficult decisions over the past uh, 14, 15 months I've been on the board and even prior to that. Um, this district and every other public school district in the state has just been hit and hit and hit. And as much as it's easy to think that maybe we're the enemy in this one, I really think the enemy in this one is in Lansing. Um, we've all been fighting so hard to turn the tide um, of these budget shortfalls from the state, but they still keep coming. Um, the shell games still keep happening, and we are doing everything we can to maintain the district that we can be proud of for our kids. Um, and that is our number one priority is, at, is achievement um, for, our, for our kids, for our students. And I'm having, this process has been difficult to reconcile our support and my support of unions and also supporting our kids and making sure the money that we have, as much money as we have, can be funneled into those classrooms and funneled for the achievement of those kids. Um, so that is why looking at the achievement of kids, we agreed to say, let's do the RFP, see what our options are, and really they truly were options, um, just to see what we could do to try and, and save for the district and save for the kids. And Karen went through an exhaustive list of ways that the administration has done a lot of savings. Um, and tried to bring in revenue and also keep down the expenses and costs. Um, but when I look at everything that we've reviewed over the last, um, I don't know, seven, eight weeks of this process, the finances, the budget um, and, and enrollment projections, the, the finances and the, the loss of money that we keep getting from the state, um, looking at the service review that we, um, that we had an opportunity to review, there's been so much that we've had to look at and that we have looked at and considered and I do have faith in the process. I do have faith in the committee that we had reviewing this. And I do have tremendous faith in our administration and Mr. Salton and Mr. Pruitt and how they've gathered information and answered our questions and provided us with that information. Um, and as hard as it has been to reconcile, I do have to go with trying to put as much money back into the classroom as much as that's painful. Um, but that is, that's where I'm at right now. And I, like Karen said, I don't see another ball that we can we can crack open and try and, and fix this with. Um, and it's not fair, um, but I think it's what we need to do, or it's what I feel like I need to do to, for, the, for the students and for achievement. I think President O'Donnell called it a conflict of, uh, what would you Values. Think? Con conflict of values, because we all sit at this table and we are all supporters of unions. And the choices that we're forced to make within these tight budgets are not just. They're just not just, and I, you know, we've had to make choices that go against what we value for our children as well. I think about the things that you and I, Nan, have seen removed from the schools since the time that we've been sitting here. I mean, our students deserve more counselors, our students deserve more reading interventionists, they deserve smaller class sizes, the list goes on and on. These are all the things that are just and we can't provide. 
So it's it's a terrible position to be in. All right, I do have something to say. Um, I will say that I was truly, truly conflicted when we were presented with coming with proposals and coming from a family of unions. I just wanted to be reassured that we had looked through all of the other, all of our options before we had to make such a drastic decision. I was on that committee. I, I originally wasn't on the committee, but I wound up being on the committee, and I'm glad that I was because I feel like I had a chance to be involved and in, in see the companies that are out there, what they could do for our employees, and based on our budgetary issues, which one would be the best one that could help at some point move our employees forward. I don't, and don't ever, I don't, I don't, I don't ever vote on a motion. And thinking this whole thing through for a considerable amount of time, I always come back to the, I always come back to what is best for the kids. And I just, I just think it's important to look at the whole picture and look at what's best for the kids down in the long run. And I hope that the anger and disappointment that our community, our staff's feeling right now, I hope you take that tonight with us and direct it where it should be because to be put in this decision is just really heartbreaking for me right now. Um, I wrote here that, that and just as I was trying to figure out what to say, that I have no illusions that this is a good choice, and that's before I knew what choice I was going to make. I mean, either of these choices is bad. Um, and in a way, it feels like the choice between the smart choice and the right choice, or the just choice, I don't know what the answer is. Um, the process you guys have gone through has been very good. Uh, we are faced with severe limitations from Lansing. Uh, we are faced with severe limitations that we inherited from a previous administration that did not shepherd its resources well. Um, and I, I feel fairly confident that uh, the, the, the plan that's been provided will, will, will give us good services uh, and will save money, and I still can't do it. I still can't feel good about this choice. Um, we are in a society where where we see every day upward shifts in income from the people at the bottom to the people at the top, uh, and from those who work for a living to those who benefit from that work for a living, and as a union member, as somebody who teaches this to students, as smart a decision as this is, I, I cannot feel good about joining into that process. And I know where it comes from. I know it comes from I know it comes from Lansing. I know it comes from from the fact that we've taken the market and we've made it religious, that we've decided that there is no way to make a decision other than what cost savings are. And I know that we need to put as much money in the classroom as we can for students. But I also can't believe at some sense that there can be, that there can't be another way. And I realize this is maybe only a symbolic gesture, but it's the only thing I know how to do. So I, 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 I can't support this particular privatization. With no aspersions cast on those who've done it, it just does not feel like the right thing. Um, the last thing I wanted to add, um, that I think, just to expand on the point about the conflicting values, is, to me, the other thing is about um, 
you know, I think that we have to save this amount of money, and the only other place, in, the only other places in the budget to look at are personnel related to that are personnel that are in other unions, and so no matter what, we have to cut this amount of essentially income out um, of our budget. It's just a question of where, who it comes from. And, and I thought deeply about these questions of, of wealth inequality too. And I think in terms of the long run, in, in terms of what we can do the most, I think preserving um, and protecting the classrooms that teach kids that are, you know, that come from poor, lower-income families, that come from single-parent families that don't have advantages at home, um, and don't have the educational opportunities, and to take away from them um, more counselors or uh, chances at at uh, um, higher level high school classes than they otherwise have is just not one that I can. That's that's not the choice that I can make. Also, so it's tough, and I respect you know I respect those of you who are voting no because it's a question that. You know, the most fundamental question we have as board members is how to allocate the resources of the district. And, and um, in the end, this is a rather fine judgment um, with a lot of gray. And however you come down, it, I know that it comes from a place of deep thought and concern <coughs> about all the stakeholders in this district and about the kids, so. And this really isn't the first time it's been discussed. I know that Nan and I had several times before said, no, we won't consider that when such ideas were brought up because we really are so fundamentally against it. I mean, but as you look through the list of all the things that we've done and all the concessions that have happened already and the positions eliminated through attrition and everything else, I, I am losing my creativity. There's only so much uh, money left. All right, any other deliberation? We are ready for a roll call. Ms. Kim. Dr. Mueller? No. Mr. Tosh? Yes. Mr. Hay? Yes. Zumi? Yes. Letters? Yes. Dean Cross? No. Yes. So with five yes and two no, the motion passes and uh, the recommendation is approved. Next up is a request to approve a bus lease contract. Mr. Proof. Yes. As um, presented at our study session, um, we have some extremely old buses that we need to deal with. Um, we have had two buses that were taken offline at the end of the year last year uh, due to being red tagged. We believe there will be a number of other buses that would have to be red tagged this year. Um, without putting money in the buses for a lease, then we wouldn't have enough buses to operate uh, for all our students next year. So um, as Ms. Petrie, our Director of Transportation, uh, talked about the study session, uh, as a recommendation to lease uh, six buses for general ed to special ed uh, for the amount of about $77,000. It's a three-year lease with a buyout at the end. Um, the intergovernmental agreement later on with Hazel Park that we'll be looking at, that money does help offset what we would need to do for the leases. Um, so it give us six new buses uh, that we would have within the district next year to be able to keep our students safe and not have buses go offline or buses get red tagged. So as part of this recommendation, um, I will entertain a motion uh, to allow Purdue uh, Public Schools to lease six buses to do Uber Cattle Services. Moved by Ms. Tooney, seconded by Ms. Cornelia. Any discussion? 
discussion on the motion? Roll call, please. Natash? Yes. Thanks, May? Yes. Tooney? Yes. Butters? Yes. Yes. Mueller? Yes. Yes. Seven yes. Uh, the motion passes and the uh, recommendation is approved. Next up is uh, the bond contract approval. Yes, we have a, a little bit of work that is left to be done around the district. Um, we're trying to find a, a more financially efficient way to get some of that work done. Um, it's been upon the recommendation of Plant Moran um, that instead of using TMP and AUK, since they have finished their work that they've been contracted to do, uh, that we look at an uh, other possible agreement that would be a lesser cost. Um, after looking at a number of different companies, we're recommending Wakely and Associates uh, to finish up uh, some of our bond work. They can do the architectural, the engineering, and the general contracting all together at quite a reduced rate from what we have been paying. Um, they currently have worked in Fraser Public Schools, Lance Cruz, Chippewa Valley, Warren Woods. Um, I'm just looking at some of the other places here, Lakeshore. Um, you know, Anchor Bay, uh, so there are a number of local school districts that they have worked with, um, and they would be working on the security wall in the high school to secure that area, uh, as well as um, some interior classroom egress issues at Roosevelt. Uh, in the packet there is regarding the, the JFK locker room uh, to redo that area for the special education, uh, we're going to put that off till the next summer. Uh, because at this point, if we bid it out, we'll get too high of a bid. So we're not in the right season, and we can wait until the next year. Uh, but we'll eventually be uh, providing better center-based classroom uh, environment for our students in that area. Um, so the recommendation is to approve Wakeling Associates uh, to finish up some of a uh, little bit of bond work uh, that we'll need to do this summer. So I'll entertain a motion to... Uh Approve that recommendation. I move by Dean Kress. Seconded by uh, Ms. Lewis May. I should have said Mr. Um, any discussion on the motion? Uh, roll call, please. Lewis May. Yes. Tony. Yes. Butters. Yes. Dean Kress. Yes. Kermula. Yes. Alash. Yes. President Obama. Yes. Seven yes votes. That motion uh, carries and the recommendation is approved. Next up is a request to approve uh, an audit bid. And Ms. Porter is here to introduce that. In February, we release an audit bid, um, a bid for audit services um, for three years. We received three bids, um, one bid was invalid. Um, based on our review, of the two bids, um, we are recommending Plant Moran uh, to be named as our auditors. Although they are not the, um, the lowest bid, their uh, bid for the three year period, uh, for, uh, 14, 15, 15, 16, 16, 17 is $450 higher um, than the other bid that we received over the three year period. And we felt that their extensive school experience um, and their training of their professional staff, as well as the support that they give to their clients um, in both um, webinars, monthly newsletters, um, was um, worthy of the additional $450. And so we're recommending um, that they be awarded uh, the bid. Um, it's a three-year bid with two um, one-year renewals. So I'll uh, entertain a motion uh, to approve Plant and Moran to conduct the district's financial audit. By Ms. Latash and seconded by Ms. Leeds May. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, uh, roll call please. To me? Yes. Letters? Yes. 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 Seven yes uh, votes. The motion carries and the uh, uh, recommendation is approved. We have uh, best practices in the Senate resolution that's next. Yes, when um, the original best practices went through, um, 
and we had legal counsel review um, all our contracts, we found that there were a couple of areas of the contracts uh, that were prohibitive subjects, and that was one of the areas that we checked off because former legal counsel had advised us that we did meet that. Um, upon further review, we did not. So we had to revise the best practice incentive. Uh, we were advised through our new legal counsel that we did meet um, the one provision for merit pay. So we just need to change those two marks on it so that we can get the $50 to student this year. All right. So I'll uh, entertain a motion to uh, adopt the resolution as presented in the board packet. Moved by Ms. Dewey. And seconded by Ms. Latash. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Letters? Yes. 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 Seven yes votes. The motion carries and the uh, resolution is adopted. Item 6.6 .6 is a request to approve an intergovernmental agreement with uh, Oak Park School District. Hazel Park. Hazel Park. I mean, Park. Hazel Park. Yes, sorry about that. I do like Oak Park. <laughs> yeah, um, great too. We have, uh, we have been working with Hazel Park and Oakland Schools. Um, to try and find a combined management system between the two transportation departments to get some economy of scale, um, as well to ensure the full-time employment of some of our uh, people within the transportation, as we know that as we contract as a district and go to two elementaries, it'll most likely be um, less busing, so we make sure that we can retain our good employees within our transportation unit. Um, so the, the intergovernmental agreement is for one year, um, part of getting the new buses and the leases is also to lessen the amount of time that our, our maintenance and mechanic have to work on our buses so it frees them up a little bit uh, to do this agreement. Uh, it would be about four to five Hazel Park buses, about four to five Hazel Park drivers. Uh, the drivers are still within the Hazel Park unit, um, but the, everything would be housed at our bus garage. Uh, is, um, Hazel Park would pay us $50,000 for the year. Uh, in order to do this agreement, and then we review it at the end of the year uh, to see if it was beneficial or if we need to revise it. Uh, but it's my recommendation that uh, we agree to the intergovernmental agreement, um, and it has already been approved through the Hazel Park Board, so this would be the final step within the agreement. Okay. And we've been uh, reviewing this since our study session, so um, I will entertain a motion to approve the contract as presented. Is made by Ms. Kermuler and seconded by Ms. Butters. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'll roll call, please. Stephen Krause? Yes. Kermuler? Yes. 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 And with seven yes votes, the motion carries and the uh, intergovernmental agreement is approved. Finally, on the action uh, agenda, item 6.7 is a request for second reading and approval of policy 5421.01, which is a uh, uh, awarding honors points for advanced placement and honors courses. Um, so this is a second reading. Is there any? Oh, Mr. Mace is here. Good evening. Good evening. Let's see if I can read this without screwing it up. Uh, beginning with the 2015-2016 school year, students at Ferndale High School and University High School will earn at least a C- in an honors course will earn an additional one-half honor point. Students at Ferndale High School and University High School who earn at least a C- in an advanced placement course will earn an additional 1.0 honor point. Students in the Ferndale High School and University High School classes of 2016 2017 2018 will retroactively earn honor points for any advanced placement or honors courses successfully completed at the high school level prior to school year 2015 2016. Students who earn at least a C minus in an advanced placement course at another high school will also be eligible for the honor point. However, students who complete honors courses at another high school will not be eligible for the additional honor point. And so that then the distinction between the honors and the advanced placement is the idea that the advanced placement courses are nationally normed courses 
whereas an honors course may not be as strictly regulated. And exactly. Regulated. And where we offer the advanced placement and the honors, we always would, would try to push that student to take the AP course versus the honor course. And that extra half honor point would hope to uh, be incentive enough to, for the student to accept that additional challenge. And so also would you agree that there's, um, so probably in likelihood, uh, underclass person, underclassman, underclass person, doesn't sound right, doesn't it? A, a freshman or sophomore <laughs> would um, likely be in an honors course, but once you get to that junior, senior level, then they're more likely to be in advanced placement because there's fewer AP courses available when you are a freshman or a sophomore. That is correct, yes. We, we do look at the possibility of adding some appropriate AP courses for ninth and 10th graders, but in general, your statement is accurate, yes. You know, I'd also like to add, and I think I mentioned this last month, that by encouraging students to take advanced placement courses, we are uh, increasing the likelihood of our students being more successful on the ACT and SAT by, by better preparing themselves for those tests. Not to mention we move up on Newsweek's ever so um, valid method of determining what schools are effective and not. There's that too. <laughs> All right, so with that said, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve policy 5421.01 on advanced placement and honors course grading. Oh, moved by. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry for not seeing you. <laughs> Ms. Kerr Um I was looking over that way That's toward, okay. toward our chair. It and uh, seconded by Ms. Butters. Uh, any discussion on the motion? All right, hearing none. Uh, roll call, please. Yes. 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 And with seven yes and zero no, that motion passes and the policy is approved. Thank you, Mr. Mace. Now we'll move on to informational items. Um, and we'll require, just before we get to this item, I had to uh, go back and review something on the video from last month's meeting. And I found the meetings go faster at one and a half speed. <laughs> we talk more like chipmunks. <laughs> so I noticed Mr. Bruner kept a crisp pace in his presentation. So is that the standard that I'm to keep to tonight, <laughs> President O'Donnell? Wow. <laughs> I was just presenting that as information. Informational fact. Well, I will only talk as long as it takes to Ms. Rushalow to get back because her information is far better than mine. Um, I just want to bring you a couple bits of information regarding uh, legislation um, that a number of our intermediate, intermediate school districts, including Oakland County, have been writing to uh, Senator Pil Phil Pavlov regarding his bill for educator evaluation. There are two separate ones, the House and the Senate. They both have a lot of differences in it, um, and there are also competing groups. The uh, Michigan Secondary Schools uh, Principal Association is saying the House is the House bill we should go with. A lot of the ISDs and Tri-County Alliance are saying the Senate one we should go with. So there is still a lot of angst and unknowing within teacher evaluation which makes it very difficult for our teachers to be able to know what, what that bar is at the state setting and for our administrators to you know, is it 45% student growth? Is it 10% student growth? Are we using the M step? Are we not using the M step? So uh, just so you know where the county is standing uh, and something that we had talked about as a superintendent's group um, that we don't really like either one, but it, out of the necessary evils, the Senate seemed to be better for districts. Um, but that's in process. Obviously, uh, Proposal 1 is coming up. Um, if you noticed, I was quoted in, in uh, Detroit News and also in uh, our local paper. So hopefully I represented Ferndale well. Uh, proposal 1, although written very poorly and very hard to understand, 
it does give $300 million back to K-12 schools, and it also makes it prohibits the school aid fund to be rated by the state, which has been happening every year. Those are the positive pieces for school districts, uh, which is why we had passed a, a resolution at the last meeting regarding it. Uh, we do not know what the impact will be if it doesn't pass. There are some districts that are, are playing doomsday and that are projecting cuts to their student aid foundation uh, if this doesn't pass. Uh, as, we've, as I've been talking with legislators and with the county, we really have no idea what the effect would be uh, if this doesn't pass. Will it mean less money for kids? Will it mean they won't even give us $75 or minus $75 per kid? Um, we really don't know. Uh, so this May 5th uh, election is important to schools, uh, and we'll have to see how it, it plays out. Um, had some other news. Early warning legislation is still out there. Just a reminder that our district would fall in this category, especially since we've eaten out of fund equity for two years. So we would fall under the early warning legislation. We just don't know how that will affect us. Um, the county has talked some about proposing a county alternative to it, where it would be people from the county that would come in to advise school boards as opposed to the state coming in, uh, where maybe we can have a third party from the county that uh, would advise the board as opposed to the state telling the board what has to be done. Um, so the county is working on some alternatives if that moves forward. Um, so that is, is generally what is happening within the world of legislation. A couple things just want to make you aware of in some events and positive things within the district. So I know that uh, so you, many things with the budget are negative, but here's what's going on that's positive. If anyone had an opportunity to go to the Coolidge Talent Show, it was phenomenal. Once again, thanks, Ms. Kramer. Thanks, Ms. Shepard, who uh, did a phenomenal job. Uh, we had a lot of great teacher and um, teacher, parent, student support. Uh, this weekend is the JFK Talent Show, so please make sure that you get out to see the JFK Talent Show. Uh, I am sorry that uh, due to uh, a family commitment on the weekend, I won't be able to see it, but I will be there Friday uh, during the dress rehearsal uh, to see the kids. It's a, it's a great event. Uh, it, Kevin's playing the trombone in your place. <laughs> You'll play it just as well. The opening from Bolero, that's what we're doing. Um, the uh, University High School, uh, uh, one of their uh, groups is going to be at the Michigan Speedway, not this weekend, but the next weekend, to compete, uh, their I IVD group. They'll be with school districts from all over the state. Uh, so we wish them well in, in Brooklyn at the Speedway. Uh, Ferndale High School this past weekend, our boys and girls team ran at Groves Invitational. Um, they had some great individual performances. Uh, our liaison to UHS talked about the track team. I don't want to let you know that was possible because of the budget amendment that this board approved, that we took $5,000 from the superintendent's funds and transfer that to UHS so they could do track because that was the deficit that they didn't have. Um, and due to some of the changes in the budget that you approved, we were able to <coughs> not spend that money on other things and be able to give money from my office to UHS. Because to me, that's why any money is in the superintendent's office, to be able to give back to buildings and students whenever possible. Um, so that was a direct influence of the decisions the board made that we have tracked now for all those students. Uh, we had a student from FHS win the Gates Millennium Scholarship. There will be more information coming, but that is a very, very prestigious scholarship. Uh, and congratulations to our high school and our students. Another great thing that's happening at FHS. Um, we also had a swimmer that signed to swim at uh, Wayne State University. I hear they have a, a great um, sociology department there. Political science. Political science. And sociology. Yes. <laughs> Honors College ain't Good down honor either. Program. Excellent honor. Uh, but we have a student that, that will be there, uh, got a scholarship to swim next year. We had a press conference last week. Uh, uh, Mr. Shelton was able, with uh, Ms. Mr. Tellisher, to do all the teacher, visit, teacher of the year visits uh, within the month. And our Roosevelt School had their farm assembly uh, last week. Uh, which is a great opportunity to see a live cow within a real school. Um, so I did not get the opportunity to go there. I wish I could have been there, but I heard the students were very excited, loved the assembly, and it was a, a great event. So just some updates on what's going on within our schools. Any questions? Um, were you going to talk at the uh, points of pride about the um, Education Excellence Award? 
in a little yes. more detail. Okay. Yes. Then I won't spoil that. Okay. Uh, spoiler, to keep to alert. spoiler alert. Spoiler <laughs> alert. All right. Any questions for Mr. Pruitt? All right. Then we'll move to Ms. Rochelov and a curriculum and instruction report. And Mr. Mace. So we just wanted to give a few updates about um, some work that we're doing. Um, I have Mr. Shelton passing out some summer preschool play groups. So each week in the summer, um, starting from June until August, we will provide um, two play dates a week. Um, one play group for ages two to three and another play group ages four and five. Um, and we have different topics for our families and our families in our community. Um, the topics range from sensory experiences, storytelling, get your motor running, wiggle worms, outdoor discovery, I love you rituals, games, music madness, and celebrating our successes. We are just wanting our community to know about the wonderful early childhood opportunities we provide and the educators that we have here. So we invite you to come and play with our youngest community members this summer. Also this summer, although we do know that PTA and OPEN have some play dates. We are also going to have some district initiated, el initiated elementary play dates. Um, we'll have four of those, two in July and two in August, and that is for all of our current elementary students. So we're already starting that process to get together, get to know each other, and have a little fun. When we learn through play, lots of learning takes place, lots of social emotional experiences. Kids will get to know each other. Families will get to know each other because parents will not be sitting on the sideline. We will be, all be playing. So we wanted you to know, have that information. It will be going out. We have worked with a few local um, organizations and private businesses that are going to be part of those play dates. Um, so it's kind of a whole encompassing of our community to do that. So we wanted to give you that information. In addition, um, we um, reached out to the Detroit Zoo. How many of you have ever gone to one of their summer concerts? How many children do you see there under the age of 12? We will be the only public education, public or private education group that will have a tent there this summer. And we will be um, having make and take and have different people there to talk about Ferndale schools. So I um, will send that through Mr. Pruitt's office to you guys so for you to sign up. You know I've been trying to do that for a long time. Yeah. And it finally happened. So we are very excited. We have four dates that we will be there um, to promote our district, our early childhood and elementary services because that's the population that's there. Um, and we need to let people know what incredible things we have. Um, so those are some things that we are doing. I have Tom here. Um, on the other side of the world, we have MSTEP taking place right now, um, and things are going very well, um, relatively well, so I thought I'd let him talk. He has really done, I mean, 24 hours, seven days a week, been working on MSTEP, and I want to recognize that. Thank you. So we've been working with building administrators and, and very much with the technology department as well, getting everybody ready for MSTEP. This is our second week. Uh, last week went just amazingly well. Um, there were a couple of hiccups, which at the moment they happened, we all thought the world was caving in, or some of the people did. But the reality is, uh, in most cases, it was a simple restart of the computer, and everything was fine. So every, every building was able to test as planned. Um, we had a couple of students whose, whose tests when they logged in said they had already completed. Uh, simple contact to MVE, they reset the test. So, um, you know, all of the fail safes that were put in place for computers that froze up worked flawlessly. So every student was able to, to take their M step and complete it as scheduled. Just to piggyback on that, because of our agreement with Oakland Schools that so we have technology, they were able to take about 12 techs 
from the other districts that they service come and get us all set up and then our techs would then work with another district which is something we wouldn't have had in the past we would have had a couple techs trying to get this all figured out um, so with that intergovernmental agreement for the diff different districts that really helped us and the other districts to be ready for this yeah there was Tom a lot too. of background work so thank you kudos to Tom also to the technology department because there was a lot of background back work or upfront work we needed to do on Friday um, the curriculum instruction department met with two representatives from Cambridge they got our money so now we can promote <laughs> so that is a good thing um, and we met for about three hours with them um, and have a lot of good things we are we have started digging into the curriculum and we are ecstatic with the decision that we've made um, tomorrow night from 6 to 7 we have our first informational parent night um, it's here in this building um, so we are excited to start sharing some of the information with the parents that are going on I'm sorry I should know that but I have like six events this week so I'm trying to figure them all out on Thursday we also have an informational session for our teachers and staff that are interested in Cambridge so we're starting that component of the training and how what that looks like from now through the summer so we had um, all of our fifth sixth and seventh grade teachers want to learn about it so that tells you your our commitments from our teachers so kudos to them as well another very cool thing that we're doing is we're working with um, the teacher of education part department at Wayne State um, and we are be going to be piloting a residency model for interns um, and so what that looks like instead of having an intern that goes to one school for a half a semester and then to another district another half a semester and so on this this intern model would have the student be in our district in one school their entire school experience with that with each teacher that has an intern or in each teacher that partners with Wayne State so if a veteran teacher wants to be um, a teacher leader she'll he or she will have two interns in her classroom so it will be three adult leads within each classroom it, it's a it's and we'll go into more details once we get the contract worked out but we're very very excited we had um, Wayne State and dr. Leah Van Bell um, come last about two weeks ago she met with us and we toured some buildings tomorrow we'll be touring other buildings with her and some other people at the teacher of education and then we'll be meeting with them a few more times to work out the kinks but just having that really a fluid and seamless um, experience for students that are interested in working in districts like Ferndale this will be very key with that they have asked some of us at the curriculum and instruction department to be part of their capstone conversation day which is really for the students who are about to graduate like they share with us a panel of a review panel what their experiences were in their capstone project it's almost like a pre-interview so we will be getting to know some of the best of the best that are about to graduate so when we get to hire they'll know our faces and what experiences we can give to them in Ferndale schools so that's next week just uh, a question that occurs to me one of the things that we've that we talked about in the strategic planning process was trying to uh, recruit and then retain more african-american teachers and i wonder um does wayne state have a uh deep uh student body in terms of diversity yes and it's part of the away. it's part of the right. this group's teacher Good. of education is part of their purpose and mission okay so so that's going on the last thing that we wanted to share with you is just the whole process of making this Harding building our new Ferndale Early Childhood Center oh I'll get emotional <laughs> I'm such a whip uh, so we've been doing lots of timelines this lady right here Amy you need to kiss her brain or let her kiss her brain because she's incredible on how she can organize classrooms and blend classrooms and find money for us to do things so our goal and I feel that it's going to happen is that we will be providing all of our kids full day experiences in our early childhood classrooms next year 
We are be, will be providing before and after school services and Friday camps. Some of the reasons we don't have children in our program is because of that. So we have been working. Her and Heidi Schmidt, the director of early childhood, godsends because they have got it together and how we can continue to promote the incredible early childhood services we have. And uh, to say thank you to them, I had a great big secret and I'm not gonna share it because this is being televised and I haven't told my kindergarten or first grade teachers yet, but we have someone pretty, pretty darn impressive. Well, the best of the best in the early childhood world coming to Ferndale schools to give a conference this summer. So, I'm glad we and, can end on that. And our enrollment has been oh, greatly increasing. We already have a class and a half for our tuition-based preschool for next year. Great. And we haven't really, I mean, that's an ongoing enrollment, but we haven't even done our new flyer and things like that. So, today we got another new student for our current Little Eagles, and we start another one next week. And we're really fragmenting their school week so that we're at our licensing capacity. So great things happening in our early childhood elementary world. That's great. And Very again, don't for forget that Amy's name. <laughs> Yay. Don't actually kiss her brain. I would tell her to kiss her brain. Well, I will disagree with that completely in the early childhood and primary world. And I can go into great detail and research for you. Evidence-based. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you, uh, Ms. Rochla and Mr. Mays. Any, uh, um, oh, we didn't have any uh, full consent agenda items, so we will now go to any Eagle Points of Pride that we have. Um, I see Nan is really looking forward to this item, so... Why don't we start uh, randomly with Nan and go <laughs> clockwise around the table? I have like three points of pride, and I'll not do points of pride next month just to make up oh. for it. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm writing this in my book. Okay, my first point of pride, and this is not just my point of pride, but also has been relayed to me from parents at Coolidge, and that is a point of pride for Mr. Pruitt. Thank you so much for being a part of our talent show I know that you're you're very humble and not making a big deal about it but it was huge that you came backstage you were hanging out with the kids you were giving them high fives you were interacting with our parents it was a really lovely thing and Mitchell our sixth grader composed mm -hmm. an original piece with six instruments mm -hmm. and our superintendent played one of those parts it was so he got a solo. You, you had a solo? Yeah. <laughs> see, it was so low you couldn't hear it. <laughs> you know I didn't get to see it because I'm making everybody be quiet in the hallway, so I, I don't actually know what goes on out there. <laughs> um, Unfortunately, Mitchell hadn't written that part from Bolero. <laughs> <laughs> he said, <laughs> woo! Um, so, thank you. It, well, my pleasure. Been, my pleasure. It was a pleasure to have you take part in that. And, um... So there's that. My second point of pride is Mr. Bruner and everybody else. Mr. Bruner gets so excited about this talent show. And he is all in. No matter what we want, no matter what we want him to do, he will do anything. I could re he gives me way too much leeway. And I try to be really respectful of that. Um, our parents and our teachers, our teachers came out, I think we had all the teachers. Mm -hmm. Um, there to help with the talent show this year and it was just I mean I every time I looked around there was somebody asking me you know like I'm here what can I do it was um, you know we, this is the third year that we've been doing this so the first year I think was rough because everybody was like I don't know what are you guys doing and then as every year it goes on probably as Amy can attest too, people start to get to, like this is really cool and I want to be a part of it mm -hmm. and um this would have never happened without all of the JFK parents who like pioneered the doing this every single year and them completely building the core for us so that way we can do it but now we do it and our kids love it it's awesome my third point of pride I know I know I know 
is so Sage, my preschooler, um, totally gashed up in his knee and had to get a bunch of stitches like two weeks ago, right? So Sage is a total spaz. And this is a point of pride. It's it it's it's gonna come back around. Um, so he had to have two days where he didn't get to move a lot, right? His preschool teacher, Miss Chrissy Keene, made a box with water and these little beads in it that Sage loved because she did it in class one time. And so she made a little takeaway one of it and left it on the porch late one night. So when I opened up the door, there was a note from Sage, to Sage from his preschool teacher and something that he could do while he was sitting on the floor and he could play in this ooey gooey box and just hang out. I mean, we have a lot of really special people in our district and I had a lot of points of pride, so okay, I'm done. But thank you. Right. I really you love now. being here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll go around Sorry, the clock. You. you said clockwise. <laughs> I didn't pay attention to that part. Okay. All right. Um, whereas I have a lot to be proud of for this district, um, when there's too, many, too much to name, what do I result? I result to my kids. All right. So, and, and, and really, this is a, really a shout out to the teachers. One in, in particular, but it's really to all of them, but one in particular because this is the one that my daughter Ava has is Ms. Harris. I'm putting a shout out to her because she is constantly, constantly pushing Ava to challenge herself and, and take on uh, subjects that she would not be comfortable with ordinarily, particularly in the math and science area. She has, she has, Ava has an affinity for that and she's just, so Mrs. Harris is pushing her uh, to achieve to greater lengths and, I, and I, I really appreciate that and as a result, my daughter Ava, who is in fourth grade, told me that she now has a nickname in the classroom from all the kids. One, well, two nicknames. One is Curly Top, because if you know her, she's always got this puff on her hair that's really curly. And Anyway, all right. And two, she's called Mrs. Einstein. And I told her that if you could have any name, I said you'd want to have that one. So my shout out is to Miss Harris and MIT, here we come. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it starts over now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Kevin. Um, on that same topic, uh, I want to uh, note my pride in the in the robotics team uh, uh, because we were traveling in that direction uh, and uh, we were able to divert a little bit and go north. We were actually able to go to the state uh, robotics tournament for for a, a little while. Uh, saw some pretty remarkable demonstrations of. Of technology and teamwork from our school and from a bunch of other schools. Uh, it was with some pride that uh, I noticed that our booth was different than all of the others. We were the only one with a kind of cultural symbol, not just kind of techy robotic stuff, but we have our shield and our screwdriver and cross wrench. It's really a very <laughs> cool symbol, uh, and I think it represents what our district is and does it very well. So I want to I want to say uh, thanks to Captain Ritzy who. Uh, encourage me to go and uh, say that my kids, I think, are, if not MIT bound, at least robotics <laughs> club bound. So uh, I'm really excited about that. And anybody wanting to help them get to the next level <laughs> can go on the Indiegogo site and um, just search MP. It pops up right away. I'm not positive <coughs> they um, adjusted it. It did say that they had reached their goal, which was to get to states. But of course, as you know, they are now going down to St. Louis. So they now need substantially more money. So please, Indiegogo, search for MP. They're also selling very nice LED lights. Um, uh, cool. which they, uh, so it's a kind of a win-win. You get a lower electric bill, and they get some of the proceeds to go towards there. Really? All right, Amy. I have two. Um, my first one is Mr. Sean Butler, the, admin, the uh, athletic director at the high school, and the baseball boosters, who um, were worked really hard. I know that they worked hard in years past and then this year Sean Butler continued the work on toward applying for the $5,000 grant or award or whatever check, great big old check from Comerica Bank for the baseball program, baseball and softball programs at um, Ferndale High School and I, I just think it just shows the dedication of that program, the staff over there, the parents 
to ensure that baseball and softball continue. Um, I thought I saw there was one clip over the weekend that that was on TV, and they quoted the Comerica Bank representative talking about you know the importance of athletic programs in schools and how this is a one way that schools are able to develop student leaders. And I thought that was a really good a really good message. Um, my second one is a very, my second point of pride tonight is a very special parent in our district. She would hate it if I was doing this, but I'm going to, I'm going to um, mention Deborah Wilson, who is a parent at Kennedy, who is um, the, the director of the talent show, and this is her last year doing it. She's done it. Um, this is her seventh, what did I, what did we decide? Seventh show. Um, the kids that were in the first show that Deborah Wilson was involved with are now seniors, and uh, so this has been, you know, a long, a long line of kids that have been able to participate in this in this event at Kennedy, and um, this is her last year of doing it. So her her youngest uh, child is a sixth grader at Kennedy. So um, I just want to give a, a tribute to Deborah for working so hard and you know a lot of what you already said man you know in terms of getting these kids up on the stage giving them the confidence and also rallying the support of the staff and the student and the teachers to you know pull it all off and um, so that's that's uh, who I'm gonna who I'm gonna hold up tonight I just want to comment on the sports piece just to have the board remember that we're one of the only if not the only district that doesn't do pay to play right and that's part of our strategic plan, that's part of our budgeting, but almost any other district in the area has has had to go into that venue. And we know how we know how that affects students, especially of a lower socioeconomic. Um, so for all those students out in other districts that would happen to hear tonight, please come to us because we don't have pay to play. <laughs> <laughs> so I think my point of pride sitting here and having just reflected on so much is um, Bill and Dina's team for all the great work they are doing to um, reach out to the public through things like the um, zoo and the play dates. It's all phenomenal. And I think how long the community has really been asking for that because we want to be bringing in families very early. And I also am thinking about my own child and how um, he also had a little bump or injury or something. And I just loved the way that this community of um, employees this isn't just a community of employees we really are a family and so the you know lunch staff told the office and the office called my husband but then they also talked to the bus driver and so my kids getting off the bus and everybody's saying to me hey just want to make sure you got the call about Ronan's rough day today give him a little extra love tonight and I just I love that sense of family and um, I'm very conscious of that given the vote we made tonight. And there are definitely family members that that are gonna need a little bit of love and support. And so let's be there for each other. My, um, my point of pride is gonna be our UHS uh, MASB Excellence Award. So I'm gonna give you a quick overview of what it is. Uh, it recognizes programs in Michigan's local and intermediate schools, reflect the innovative spirit of today's school, and measurably approve student achievement. Twenty programs will be recognized this year, including a uh, newly crowned overall winner based on total score. So we don't know for the overall. But uh, they receive applications from all over the state. Uh, only 20 are picked, and it's based upon their innovation and being actually able to measure student achievement. Um, and what, what UHS applied with was their partnership with Wayne State. Uh, so we're one of only 20 schools in the state to receive this recognition. Um, I will say that I believe Roosevelt uh, had one of these in years past. Is that correct, Ms. Yes. Rushlow? What, what year, <laughs> do you remember what year that was? 2000. Was it 12? 12. Hang on. No, 11? I don't know. Okay. In the, so somewhere in that in that time period. So this is our second MASB Education Excellence Award in our district. So um, we will have a road sign that will go up. Um, and so we have a, there is a road sign on the side of Roosevelt. And we'll have to get it up. 
over in the community. Um, there is a reception um, that I will be at with our UHS folks and some students uh, for all the 20 schools in the state. And then uh, they might actually have them present at the MASB conference next fall. So it's a great award for any of our buildings to get. And when, uh, presumably, since it's the Michigan Association of School Boards, any school board member that was free that day could attend too. So yep, I will what, give you the. I think we. Yeah, you did send yeah. that along. So if you're yeah. interested, uh, the RSVP instructions are on the, the information from Blake. Yep, or you can just send your names to me, and uh, we'll send it in. Even better. We got you covered. All right. Um. Uh, the one point of pride um, that I'll uh, say today, even though there are many choices, is just uh, for the 46 uh, seventh grade students, seventh and eighth grade students, um, that will be inducted into the National Junior Honor Society at the middle school on Thursday evening. Uh, so everyone is invited to that event um, at seven o'clock in the high school auditorium. And uh, yeah, it's a it'll it's a not it's a fairly short ceremony, um, but it really is uh, heavily student led, and it's a great opportunity to recognize those middle school students that have worked hard to achieve uh, at high levels and launch them on to successful high school careers. And what evening was that again? Thir Thursday. Thursday. This Thursday, um, the twenty third at seven. Going last, um, I had a whole list, and they've all been covered. But there are so many things in this district that are amazing. So I'm going to kind of circle back around to my kids and then broaden it out. I want to um, have a point of pride for all the amazing students that we have in the district that um, get up on stage and sing and dance and perform and create robots and wow audiences with their science. Because I have two third graders at home who can't wait to join the robotics team. He just lit up when I told him that there might be one in fourth grade um, starting, um, thanks to Christy Stoll, um, working with the robotics team and having an older kid in Impy. Um, I have another kid who's actually gonna take the stage next weekend, or this upcoming weekend at JFK, and is so excited and is nervous about singing for the first time with a microphone, but is so excited about doing his thing um, with Adam Levine, his new hero. And I also have another kid who can't wait, can't wait to be part of stage crew and wants to play with those lights and wants to play with those microphones and wants to really wow people with all that cool science and technology and light stuff. So I just want to thank all these amazing kids that take the stage, um, especially also the, the Ferndale High School um, musical. We went to see that several times because one of my kids fell in love with it and wanted to go back and go back and go back. So all these older kids are inspiring these younger kids, and they can't wait to grow up. They can't wait to go to middle school. They can't wait to go to high school and do all this cool stuff. Um, so I want to thank all the older kids that are making this possible and really making the world an exciting place for my, my little ones. So. All right. I have your, our director of instruction uh, noting, too, that yes. uh, for an early dependent percussion was not on the list of those mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, this time, and, uh, they took I could put, I could, I could do a Please fourth. Please do, Nan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're kind of counting on you for that because I believe it's, you know one of the members. It's so funny because when you guys started talking about robotics, I was like, ooh, I completely forgot about my son's so percussion. They had, they had a second place finish? Okay, um, so they won first, so first place nationals, place. Okay. second place worlds. So Ferndale, independent percussion. Um, my son is the second youngest member of the team at 14. Uh, the team goes up to age 22. We have the past three, like, um, drum majors. Drum majors are in it. Thank you. You knew exactly what I was talking about as soon as I did that. And um, Danny Chun, who does our battery for marching band, directs this. And um, he's a Ferndale family. Um, his family is all part of the schools and stuff like that. It's just. Uh, Wow, talk about dedication, 12 hour days of practicing, um, just the intensity and the growth that I saw in, in my kid, speaking from that perspective, 
just a few months was overwhelming and um it's a whole it's a whole it's another thing another feather in our cap i mean what can you not get here I, it's it's a really amazing time i think to be part of ferndale schools and have all of these amazing options to choose from so thank you for reminding me dina because i don't think that connor will ever watch this on tv but if he did I... <laughs> good job if he buddy. makes it to hour three <laughs> yep Jim, Karen, uh, Karen reminded me of a couple others really quick. Just yes. A couple of shout outs to a couple of community groups that raise money for Ferndale students. Oh. Um, the Rotary Club had their spaghetti dinner Thursday night, and the Pleasant, Rim, Pleasant Ridge Women's Club had their brunch Saturday um, over, over the weekend. And those, you know, the proceeds from both those events go towards scholarships for our kids. And um, so that was, those are a couple of groups that I wanted to to thank and uh, I know Mr. Pruitt was at the Rotary dinner and um, so it's you know got to make sure we keep those those groups in our in our minds yes good thank you Adina would this be going up on <laughs> okay. it'll be going up everywhere <laughs> all right <laughs> so our next uh, regular board meeting is Monday May 18th here at the uh, Harding Early Childhood Education Center. And unless there's an objection, we are adjourned at 956. Oh, oh my gosh, remember how many names were there to last year at this time? No, no, no I blocked right. it all out. <laughs> <laughs> I do not remember any of it. Washed it all.